And today's video, I'm going to be going over the top four CSS trends that are actually useful and will save you time. And I didn't make this video as short as possible with a lot of information, so make sure you watch all of it. But before we get started, make sure you like this video, subscribe so you don't miss upcoming lessons or videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions or have anything you'd like to say. But now, let's get started. Starting off with the first trend of our video, it's going to be the has selector. In my HTML file, I have an unordered list, a bunch of list items with a label and an input. So we can see that the current style that I have changes the color to this nice red. And so what this selector allows us to do is select a parent of an element based on a specific condition. So in this case, we can select the list item when the input is checked or something different. But let's just start with the list item. So we're going to write UL li, and here's where we're going to use it. So we're going to write has. And in the brackets here, we're going to write the condition, so input, that is checked. Now, if we save this, nothing's going to happen because we're changing the color of the input. But what we can do is change the background color to red too. And this is what it's going to look like now. We can also set the color to white so that we can actually see it. So there it is. And let's also set the border radius to 0.4 REMs. So this is what it's going to look like now. Now this is only one example of how you can use a selector, but there's a bunch of different ways in which you can. Now moving on to the next trend, which is going to be the container query. And it's pretty similar to the media query because it allows us to make our websites more responsive. But the difference is, is that we're going to have a container. So in this case, it's going to be each of these cards. And in the condition, we can write if the card's width is smaller than, let's say, 400 pixels, then we're going to remove the H3, which in this case is just going to be the time. Or we can even style it or change the style. So it really just depends on what you want to do. And it's really nice because if you have multiple cards or any other elements that are not the same size and you would want them to be responsive on their own, then this is going to be the perfect solution for you. So in the styles, what I'm going to do is go to the card and set this as a container by using the container property, which I misspelled. So container, the first value is going to be the name. So I'm just going to name this card. And the next one is going to be the type. So inline size is going to work. Now at the very bottom, I'm going to write at container and we're going to be using the card and in the round brackets, we're going to write width is smaller than 400 pixels. And here we're going to set the H3 to be display none. And now if we zoom in, we can see that the H3 disappears. So if you want to keep the H3 and let's say you want to remove all of this text, you can also do that, or even let's say j just this link. So, so I'm just going to change this to our anchor tag. And if I zoom in, we can see that it disappears and you can pretty much do whatever you want. But since this card is a container now, we can't really select it here. So if I write, we can see that if we zoom in, nothing happens. And that's because it's the container. So you have to be careful on how you do all of this. And so if you learn container queries, you're going to be ahead of a lot of other developers. Moving on to the next trend, which is going to be CSS nesting, and you can do this in vanilla CSS now. So um, in this example, we can see that I'm selecting the H3 and the H2 inside of the card in case, let's say, I had an H2 here and I didn't want to style it. What you can do is instead of writing card and an H2, you could go inside of the card and select the H2 and then do something, and then the H3 and then also do something. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it in here, and then also the font weight, put it in here. Now if I remove this and go in here, we can see that we're going to have no errors and everything works. Um, and let's actually try to do something. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to set the color of the H2. So color, and I'm going to send it to something random. So let's do dark, whatever this is. And we can see that it works. We can move this down here. We can set the background color to something. So let's say dark. Let's also set the color of the text to be white padding. And we can see that all of this worked. So now you can have your CSS file a lot cleaner. The next one is called focus visible, and it allows us to make more user friendly websites for keyboard navigators. So the way that it works is when you press tab, we can see that we're going to have this input outlined and then this input and then the button. But if I actually remove the styles or 
save the nothing and press on tab we can see that it's just going to be dark and it's not going to look too good so you can change all of that so to do that we're going to select the inputs and the button so we're going to write input and then use focus visible now i'm going to do the button and here we can see that the default outline is going to be black so we can change that to red if we want to and now we can see that it's red and since we're changing all of this this is what it's going to look like so you can change this to just outline color and then set that to red which is going to be pretty much the default one but just with the different colors so we can see that there it is but you can set this to whatever you want to so we can do outline two pixels and instead of solid we can change that to dotted and then change the color to something random so we can do green so light green and there it is so we can see that it's dotted i'm going to change that to one pixel just to see what it looks like we can change that to five pixels which is going to pretty much just kind of like add padding i want to change that to one and let's change this to five pixels just to play around and see what it looks like so there it is and you can customize this however you want to but it's a really nice small touch to add to your website to make it more user friendly and so this is going to be for this video so i know it's a short video but i just want to put all the useful ones the other ones aren't as useful but this is where i'm going to end this so i really hope that you liked it and if you did then make sure to leave a like subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos comment down below if you have any questions or if you have anything you'd like to say and hopefully see you in the next video